Again, apologies for the poor audio conditions. Um, I'm at my house and I'm not sure what the background noise is, but I haven't been able to isolate it. I'm going to do uh, part three here because part two ended rather abruptly. Um, and what we, the guess that we've made so far, based on letter frequency in the uh, ciphertext compared to letter frequency in English, and also a little bit of word spotting up here to guess that this first word was the. So plain text T is Q, plain text H is C in the ciphertext, and plain text E is T in the ciphertext. And we've also made a guess that plain text A is S in the ciphertext. So just making those guesses, and keep in mind, they could be wrong. It seems to be okay because we've got um, doubled T's and doubled E's, and that's what we expect. There's lots of E's and lots of T's, and that's great. And if we look through here, we can kind of see that there are some chunks of words. So here's a W, E, T, H, E. And just thinking about what words might have that in there, the word weather, W, H, E, T, H, E, R, pops in. So what this tool allows you to do is you can type in that R and that W and then click Update Alphabet, and that will fit R and W into where they might be. And here's this K and this Q, which we determined were probably not right. So let's go ahead and or the K and the Y, and we're going to delete that. And we'll hit Decrypt, set it back up. So let's make another guess. Um, looking through here. H E A blank. So that could be here. If we put that in there and say update alphabet. Then F ends up way over here, which in alphabetical order that doesn't jive really. So delete that guy. And maybe it's a D. Maybe it's the word head. If we update alphabet. Oh, S pops over here like it's in the keyword. Interesting. Let me get rid of that. And then decrypt. Okay, so what else do we see here? Oh, E A D T H. What word could end in that? So that could be like something, end of a word, and then the. But let's just think, let's think about this. E A D T H. Word breadth has it in there. So what if we say that this word is breadth? We click update alphabet. Take a look here. O blank Q, that's perfect. There's one letter that could fit in between there, P. And then SW blank FT. Let's decrypt and see what happens. Okay, oh, things are starting to look a lot like English here. So we've got A blank D in a lot of places, so I can just grab one of them, and one of them happens to be right here, and try sticking an N there. And then update alphabet. Wow and a lot of things pop up. So I'm going back and forth between the plain text and the key and seeing how that if, you know, how they affect each other. So I see SW blank FT. That's the beginning of the keyword or key phrase. The only thing I can think of is Swift that would fit in there. If I click decrypt now and look up here, wow. Lots of stuff are coming out. Or lots of stuff is coming out. So. A, T, T, this addered, it could be tattered, it could be scattered, I can make a guess there. Here's some easy pickings. Um, the blank R, E, A, T, E, blank, or E, blank, T, and E, blank, T up here. We're going to guess that that's E, S, T, which is a common three letter sequence. We click update alphabet after that. Boom. All sorts of stuff keeps popping out. So we're just going back and forth and back and forth. And if I say the blank and breadth, well, maybe length fits in there. Update alphabet. Hmm, looking good. And now I can take a look down here at this alphabet. Swift must be the keyword. And then you start using the letters. So A, B, C, D, E. We used F to go to G, H. We used I, put in J, K, L, M. Decrypt, and you can keep going through the rest of the alphabet, and you're going to decrypt this um, excerpt from Gulliver's Travels, and the author is Robert Swift, so that makes sense. Okay, we're done.